Hello, and welcome back to the Proverbs 31 Ministries Morning Show. We're so glad that you're here and joining us. My name is Nicole Moses. If you joined us last month, you might be seeing a familiar face. Today, we have a fun new co-host, Megan Ryan. Megan, welcome to the Morning Show. Thanks, Nicole. I am excited to be back. I am stepping in for Maddie today while she's on tour with Lisa Turker. So they are currently in Nashville, but we would love to hear where y'all are tuning in from. If you haven't already left a comment, letting us know, maybe you can make a new friend. We love seeing where you guys are. Yes, absolutely. We miss Maddie, but we're so excited to have you here, Megan. Um, well, hello. We have some people coming in. Hello to Helen. Hello, Trish. Hi, Deborah from Ohio. We're so glad that you're here. Well, to get us started, I wanted to open us up with a question um, for you, Megan, and for all of our friends watching. I would love to know, where are you reading in God's word right now? So I'm in two places right now. My church is going through the book of James and there is a reading plan that goes along with it. So I'm reading that every morning, but I'm also uh, using our first five study guide on the book of Leviticus and Nicole Leviticus has been a, a wild ride. Um, I have never really spent much time there, but I've really been enjoying the study and just learning more about that book of the Bible. And it's just very, very interesting. What about you? Yes, I am also studying the book of Leviticus with our first five community. And, you know, you're not, you're not lying when you say it is wild. I have done or tried to do a Bible in a year a couple times. And right around Leviticus is usually where um, that comes to a halt. So I'm so thankful to have the study guide because uh, sometimes these things, they'll just go right over your head. They're yeah. it's very wild. Um, it's true. And I don't know about you, but I've, you know, been studying the Bible for years now. And I sometimes get in these seasons where I feel like I'm in a little bit of a rut where it just kind of feels like I'm going through the motions or maybe I'm reading and I'm just kind of glazing over and not really getting anything out of it. Um, so would love to hear if I'm the only one who feels that way. If anybody in the comments wants to confess that they also sometimes feel like reading God's word is not the first thing they want to do in the morning. Oh, absolutely. Megan, you are not alone. I'm right there with you. I feel like I'm sort of going through that right now, kind of. I've got um, my quiet time. It's prayer. And I have like a nonfiction Christian book that I'm reading um, and sometimes it's hard for me to want to open my Bible. I think, like you said, sometimes you're, you're reading and things are just, not, you're not retaining anything, or maybe you just don't know where to start. Like, where do you just open your Bible and the page that it falls on, you read it? I have, it can be so hard. So we just want you to know that if you're struggling with that, one, you are not alone. You are absolutely not alone and you are not a bad Christian if that is something that you're facing right now. So if you have that lie in your head, we just wanted to tell you that is not true. We all have those times that we want to read God's word. We know that it's what's best for us. And yet sometimes it can really feel like we just aren't connecting to God the way that we want to. Yeah, totally. And maybe you're in a season right now where you get so excited to wake up in the morning and read God's word. You're getting so much out of it. You're learning so much. You feel like you're hearing from God and we are cheering you on. And I think that's just a good reminder that, you know, these kind of things are come in seasons. And I always remember this. I wrote it in the front of my Bible when I was in college. Um, my pastor said that discipline leads to desire. And so that dis daily discipline of getting in God's word even when you don't feel like it, even when you not feel, don't feel like you're getting anything out of it, over time, that builds a desire and a hunger for more of God's word. And it also is just, um, even in ways we can't see, it is transforming us and preparing us for um, things that in scripture that we may need in a future season. And so if you're in that spot right now, we are totally understanding and with you. And so one thing that I feel like really um, kind of like re- focuses me when I spend time in God's word and I'm in one of those seasons is starting out with prayer. And I know that sounds super simple, but when we start 
our time in the word and prayer and ask God to give us wisdom, to open our eyes and our hearts to what he might want to say or teach us or to give us more clarity. I feel like that just sets us up for time in the word and maybe it doesn't feel any different, but just inviting God into that time and asking him for eyes to see is a great way to start your time in the word when you're in one of those seasons where you're just kind of feeling like, I don't know if this is worth it today. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a good reminder that we do need God's help and we need the Holy Spirit to sometimes bring to light what we're reading. And so if you need an example of what a prayer like this might look like or sound like, we're going to link a free resource in the comments. It's going to include these three tips that Megan and I are going over and also a short prayer for you to have when you are coming to spend time with Jesus. So we'll put a link in the comments for that, for you to grab that free resource. The second thing that we can do is start to understand the context of a passage by asking a few questions like who, what, when, where, and why. So what this might look like is, for example, if I'm reading the book of Ephesians, I might want to know things like, why is this book called Ephesians? Who wrote this book? Why was it written? When was it written? And so you can use a study Bible to answer these questions. You can look it up. You could consider purchasing a commentary. This gives you such an in-depth perspective of why what you're reading was important then, why it applies to us today. And so commentaries are great. They provide explanations and all those historical facts surrounding particular verses in scripture. Yeah. And if you're like me, I've kind of like wondered, like, is a commentary like really necessary? Like what value does that add? And especially, as I said, with studying Leviticus, I found commentaries to be so very helpful. Um, Leviticus has a lot of like sacrifices that are very, very specific. And previously reading it, I've gone, why does this matter? Why is this so in depth? And as I was reading commentaries, I was learning that Israel was like God's chosen people and a set apart nation. But then there were all these other nations that worshiped pagan gods and they had specific sacrifices that they made to those gods. So God, like our God, Yahweh, like made these sacrifices. So they looked different than the pagan gods. So there was no similarities between the two the way that the Israelites would worship God was totally separate from the pagan gods as a way to show that they were set apart and they were different than other nations and they worshiped the one true God which is totally applicable to us today like we are called to be a chosen like nation set apart a royal priesthood as it says in first Peter and so that knowing that is just a good reminder to me to go okay like my life is supposed to look different than the world around me. And I never would have gotten that out of Leviticus had I not read the commentary and gotten that like historical kind of context for what was going on in the passage. Yeah, absolutely. I think something that felt maybe like a little weird and a little random ended up being, yeah, this huge aha moment that is very applicable to us today. And so we didn't ask those questions and look a little bit deeper. We would have missed so much of what those verses were saying. Yeah. And I think it's important to also remember that studying God's word is meant to draw us closer in our relationship with God so that we know him better and know his character better. And we can trust him more. It's not about just gaining more knowledge and facts it's like actually about like this is God's given us his word as a way to know him and know what he's like and so just even remembering that it's about knowing God better it's not just about knowing more information when you're getting into deep study and reading commentaries and things like that yeah absolutely what a good reminder okay well the third thing that we can do is write down the words of a verse on a piece of paper and then underline individual words or phrases that seem to work together And so once you've done that, you can reflect on why these words or phrases are in this particular passage and what value they add to it. So for example, if I was reading Ephesians 1.17, that verse says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. To me, I would underline, I keep asking that phrase that stands out to me because it tells me that Paul didn't just pray once that the Ephesians would have wisdom and revelation. He kept asking, he kept showing up and praying these words and asking the father this. And so just by noting this example, it challenges me to think about how I can do that in my life. 
And so this is a really great reason to have a journal nearby. Megan, I know you're a big fan of journals. I am a huge fan of journaling and I keep all of my journals, which is probably taking up an excessive amount of space in my house, but it's really cool to me. Like if I were to say study Ephesians right now, but I studied it five years ago to go back and see like, what was the Lord teaching me then? Like, what was something that was new to me that, you know, and just kind of compare those things side by side and refer back to them. I think it's a really cool way just to remember kind of the journey the Lord has taken me on, but also just remember what he um, said back then. And it's just a good reminder that God's word is living and active. It's something that he gives us as a tool to fight the enemy. It's something as he gives us a tool for daily life. And again, like I said earlier, as a means to know him better. And so we don't want to miss those valuable things. And I personally think journaling is like a great way to reflect back on all God has done in my life and taught me through his word. And so We want to remind you that this, these three steps we talked about prayer and context and commentaries and journaling, we've put together a guide for you and the link is in the comments for you to get three Bible study basics. And we hope that it's just encouraging you in your time with the word. If you maybe need a little refresh or a reminder or a guided prayer that Nicole mentioned earlier, uh, we have that in there. So before we go, Nicole, would you just mind praying for us in our time in the word after kind of talking about some of these things today before? we go. Yeah, absolutely. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the gift of your word. I thank you that it um, is God breathed, that it is living and active, that it is applicable to us today, um, and that it is a way for you to speak to us. And so God, I just pray that this week as we open your word, Lord, that we would put away any distractions and just come to you with an open heart, ready to listen and to study. Um, And God, I pray that if we come away with it, not hearing anything, that we wouldn't be discouraged, that we would hold on to the truth that like Megan said, that those words will still stick with us, that you will still use those words to um, bless us in some way, Lord, and that if that happens, that we'll just try again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And so we're just so thankful for you giving us this tool um, and for how much that you do love us, Lord. I pray for just wisdom this week and discernment um, for what we study and how and when. And so, Lord, we just love you so much and we thank you for being such a good father to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nicole. And thank you guys for tuning in with us this morning to talk about these three Bible study basics to know. We are going to be back here in two weeks with our friend Kendra Legrand. She is going to be talking with us about the importance of what we see in the mirror is not a reflection of who we are. And you are not going to want to miss it. Kendra is one of our favorite people. And I know she's just going to bring some awesome wisdom, but also a lot of fun to the show. So meet us back here. Same time, same place, March 24th. And we will see you next time. Yes. Bye everyone.